Eric, how are you? How are you? How did you get notified? I know your brother Alan was in the fold, obviously, but did he just call you on the phone and say, "Hey"? Yeah, that was basically it. You know, he, um, I was living in Atlanta, um, not really doing too much. I had left Pittsburgh, where most where my career had been based since the beginning, really. Um, and Alan called and just said uh, he's putting this new band together. And he wants a saxophone in. And my response was, I don't think so. <laughs> of course, I mean, you, you know, what, 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 what's the music going to be? Look, you have to understand something. I was not into Prince. Right. Other than a few of his songs that I may have heard and liked. But I had one album of his, didn't much care for it, other than a, maybe one song. Um there was nothing about the idea of it that had any interest to me, basically, other than the fact that finally I realized, you know something? I need a gig. And I had no illusions or expectations about what it was going to be. Uh, I came up to Minneapolis basically to do a recording session. And for me, that might have been the, sum, the complete sum total of it. Um, Alan had told me that he... Alan had played for Prince some recordings of mine, you know, probably my, my band in Pittsburgh or whatever. And Prince was sufficiently impressed to say, let's bring him up here to do the session. But to whatever degree Prince heard something that he thought might be a value, that didn't guarantee that once we got in the studio that anything was going to really work. You know, I mean, he, you know, I could have gone in there. He might have said to me, he said, Erica, thank you so much for coming. I don't think this is what I'm looking for. Or by the same token, I, I was there to just do a recording session for the guy, do it and get, and, and get paid. And at well, the end done. of that, if it wasn't something that I particularly was interested in continuing, I would have gone back to Atlanta. And that would have been that. Um, right. Fortunately, we we both enjoyed the afternoon. Um, but you have to understand my, my involvement was completely incremental because once I did that session, I stuck around to hang out with Alan and mainly because I had family here. My mother was from St. Paul and I had aunts and uncles and cousins that lived here that I hadn't seen in a long time. So I came up here more to see them than, All right. you know, it was like, I'm coming to come up here. They're going to pay me to come up so I can spend some time with my family. And oh yeah, I'm going to do a recording session with this guy and I'll get paid for it. And wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was basically the, I, you know, I had no expectations, illusions. And also I, I did have enough understanding from Alan's involvement that this was a guy that can change his mind. Like we change underwear. Right. Of course. Yeah, you know, of so course. whatever, whatever degree. And, and this was just as purple rain was coming out. So, I mean, yeah. he had bigger fish to fry, you know? Um, and, and I think Alan had already told me that the likelihood of this project was actually going to come to fruition, that it could be much as, as much of a, a year yeah. before it was ever going to be released. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, that's a year that he can completely lose interest in this and just move on. So I had, you know, I wasn't going to, I was just going to see where this went. Right. And it went. <laughs> so you came in as, as a session musician at first, yeah. as you said, incrementally. Yeah. Being now, uh, by the way, uh, we have a person on the line. I'll, don't go anywhere. Uh, I'm speaking, speaking to the person, person who's going to come in as a guest. guest. I've hidden where he is and, and who he is from you guys. It's going to be a surprise, but just uh, that person, please hang on. Bean, so you and I are sitting in this circle. This is what I remember in the warehouse. Do you remember us sitting around when that when everybody had left and, and Prince came in and he said, you know, he, he told us about the family. Do you recall that at all? Kind of. I, I, I know he was impressed with, you know, you being an 18-year-old kid and you had a nice voice. He had heard you singing on the piano or something. And it was something about you that he liked. So Not for long, though. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, 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 it's that plaid, maybe it's that plaid jacket you're wearing. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Hey, I put a suit on sort of for you. And wait, Bean, be nice. I'm wearing you. Do you see? See that? Yeah, I see that. Okay, all right. I'm representing you here. Oh, so I re here's what I remember. Uh, you and I sitting in the warehouse in Eden Prairie, sitting around in a circle, and Prince said, okay, everybody left. Morris is gone. 
Chessie's gone. Yeah. What do you guys want to do? I'm going to form a new band, and I'm paraphrasing and trying to, you know, go into my brain to uh, to recall this. But as I remember it, he said, I got a new band, and I want you to be the singer in it. And he pointed at me, yeah. and wh yeah. whomever doesn't want to do it, that's cool. Go your own way. Yeah. And I think Jerry Hubbard was in that meeting, and he ended up going with, with Jesse. Jesse. Yeah. And then... Jesse. And that was the first time I was notified about that. 